Hey everybody, welcome back to Freedom Malts. Germ here. A little bit different today. Uh, I'm going to do a little uh, response video, I guess. Um, Jason C. over at the Mash and Drum just put out this great video about 10 American single malts for beginners. Uh, I'll link that video right up here or right up here. One of the two. I don't know. It's a great video. Go check it out after watching this one, though. I want to say I'm not nearly as polished as Jason. Uh, he is ahead of the curve as far as video quality and knowledge is concerned. Uh, great videos, great channel. Check it out if you haven't done so. I'm sure you already have, however. Um, I am just a roughneck auto technician from the North Woods of Wisconsin that loves whiskey. And American Single Malt is one of those types of whiskey that I find is just super, super cool. The idea of being able to see the creation of a brand new American whiskey category is fascinating to me. You know, the other quintessential American spirit bourbon, nobody watching this video was alive when that was put into place and made a category of whiskey. So that all being said, First and foremost, let's cover those definitions real quick. American Single Malt Whiskey Commission has put forth some definitions that they want to see in place as far as the TTB requiring to put American Single Malt on the label. Um, I'll have those definitions scrolling here, but first and foremost, 100% malted barley. Uh, needs to be made out of 100% malted barley. Obviously, we're talking about single malt, right? Uh, mashed distilled, matured in the United States, distilled completely at one distillery, matured in an oak cask, oak cask, no other specifications, no larger than 700 liters, which is a freaking huge barrel. Um, the last two definitions are pertaining to proof, uh, not distilled to more than 160 proof, and not bottled at less than 80 proof, which are pretty standard across the all the categories. All right, so um, before we get into this list of 10 American single malts for beginners or even not beginners, 10 American single malts that you should be trying if you're into it or want to explore it. Jason did mention in his video that there is no requirement on the still. Uh, Scotland does require a single malt to be made on a copper pot still. Our definitions, there's no requirement for still type there, which I will completely agree that copper pot stills are king when you're talking about single malt. However, the lack of requirements there for stills opens up some possibilities for variance in what you get as a final product. Obviously, we know there's the copper pot still, we know that there is the column still, but there's, you know, the coffee still. There is also Leopold's Brothers three chambers still. So there is some possibility to make some really unique spirits in the American single malt category through some of those other types of stills. Also want to point out just a, just a small little correction, talking about Westland and their core range, the American oak, the sherry wood, and the peated. That has been changed uh, back in about 2001, or 2000, 2021. Uh, they no longer bottle those three expressions, the American Oak, Sherry Wood, or Peated. They have opted to kind of combine those three releases and make one flagship American single malt. Let's get into this list, right? All right, so first up, we're gonna talk about Andalusia. Andalusia coming out of Blanco, Texas. They are, in my opinion, putting out some of the best whiskey out of Texas across all categories. Seriously, guys, these guys rock whiskey out. It is fantastic stuff. They have a core range of three different whiskeys. They have triple distilled, which is going to be kind of done in the Irish style. 100% malt of barley, ran through the still three times, aged for a minimum of three years. They have Revenant Oak, more of a Scottish style whiskey here. 100% malted barley. They're putting it in used oak. Oh, and it's also slightly peated. Uh, and then they have striker, which is um, like Texas barbecue wood smoked in new barrels, also aged for about three years. Out of these three 
core whiskeys that they got, I'm sure there is a bottle that suits any taste preference. On top of those three, they're also doing special releases. They're also doing some bottle your own stuff at the distillery. They're also making some rum and they're also making brandies. I mean, these guys, these guys are rocking it out. And Moose over there, the head distiller, fantastic dude. Uh, and kind of like an evil genius. Oh, by the way, they've been doing all of this stuff on a 250 gallon still. Um, but to be on the lookout for these guys, they just took delivery of a brand new 750 gallon stripping still. They are looking to quadruple their output and hopefully, hopefully we can start seeing them on the shelves outside of Texas and they can start getting some really good distribution. If you see an Andalusia, definitely pick it up. If you're interested in trying Andalusia, they do ship to um, a bunch of states. Check them out on their website. It is going to be just the three cores that you can get uh, on their website. So definitely worth picking up any of those three as well. All right, number two on this list. We're going to travel just one state to the west, and we're going to get into New Mexico. Santa Fe Spirits, uh, the Coquigan single malt. They've been rocking whiskey since 2010. They're mesquite smoking barley to make their whiskey. They're putting it in a mixture of used and new and various different sizes of casks and storing it in their climate controlled rickhouse. The whiskey they're putting out is vibrant, it's fruity, it's got a wonderful mouthfeel. The smoke on it from the mesquite is very well balanced and a nice accent flavor to the, to the malt. Their range of whiskey, they have this flagship mesquite smoked American single malt. They have a cast drink version of that. They also do a apple brandy finished version, a PX sherry finished version, and then they also do an unsmoked version too. They are shipping to 41 states from their website, so it's pretty available across the nation. Um, should be on some shelves in a lot of the bigger stores and bigger markets. So keep an eye out for these guys, but definitely an American single malt that you should try. All right, so staying in this south southwest area of the country, we're going to travel one more state over and we're going to go to Arizona, Tucson, Arizona, where Whiskey Del Bach is made. Whiskey Del Bach was conceptualized one night sitting around the campfire in 2006, where Elaine and Stephen Paul said, What if we smoke barley with mesquite instead of peat? The idea grew and grew and grew, and since they knew mesquite wood already, they had a furniture design business that specialized in mesquite wood furniture. They knew the wood, they knew what it tasted like on food, and they said, let's make some whiskey like this. 2011, Whiskey Del Bach was born, and after some serious R&D, they came out with a very nice, clean, unsmoked spirit in the classic expression it is now called after that was dialed in and and perfected he put the southwest spin on it by smoking the barley with mesquite and thus dorado was born and that is the smoked expression from those two early expressions they've expanded and grown they are now doing some distillers cuts they're doing finished whiskeys they're doing whiskeys in peated barrels I mean, they're doing all kinds of stuff, and to the extent of independent bottlers taking notice and bottling their stuff, as uh, Lost Lantern just did recently with their single distillery series. If you are seeing a bottle of Whiskey Del Bach on the shelf anywhere near you, pick it up, give it a try. It's a great whiskey with a nice Southwest spin on it. it has its own unique characters. If you get into the smoke stuff, the Dorado is fantastic and that mesquite really changes the barley into this really unique flavoring uh, of a whiskey versus most other single malts that you might be used to. Uh, so Whiskey Del Bach on the must try list and uh, check them out guys. All right, now we're gonna hit that West Coast and look at St. George Spirits out of California. In a story much like Stephen McCarthy's at Clear Creek Distillery, uh, George Rupf started St. George Spirits. Uh, the fun fact here is he actually helped Stephen McCarthy start Clear Creek Distillery. 1982, they started using California fruit to make brandy 
in the traditional old world style. Um, in 1996, a guy shows up at the distillery by the name of Lance Winters. He showed up with a resume in one hand and a bottle of homemade whiskey in the other. Long story short, he's now the head distiller. 1997 is when they put their first whiskey into a barrel. If you want to talk about OGs in the American single malt scene, St. George Spirits is definitely one of the two OGs, uh, right up there with McCarthy's. This expression from St. George is the baller. Uh, the baller boasts their signature five roast levels of barley, aged for three years, and then it's finished in a umushu cask, uh, Amushu is a Japanese liqueur, a Japanese fruit liqueur. This Amushu was made in-house at St. George. Uh, this is definitely one of the most unique and different American single malts that I've had. It is going to be a divisive one. If you, know, if you try it and you don't like it, it's not a surprise. But I tried it and damn, is it not great. Uh, it's unique. It's definitely different. And it embraces this open openness to the rules of American single malt. So St. George, if you see any of these, give them a shot because they are worth picking up. All right, moving on to number five. We are going to go from California all the way to the other coast in New York, Brooklyn, New York, actually. Um, and you're looking at this going, but that's an SMWS bottle. That's right. Drew Kellen, since 2010, Brad Astorbrook has been making malt whiskey and other types of whiskey, from milling to bottling all in-house. These guys are making malt whiskey so good, they caught the attention of the SMWS, which, if you don't know, is a premier independent bottler of some of the best Scotch whiskey that you will likely come across. Brukellen is making malt whiskey in a very traditional, old-style Scottish way by double distillation and copper pot stills, and then they put that American twist in it by aging it in new charred 53 gallon barrels. Their malt is very well rounded. It's got a nice fruity sweetness, a nice nuttiness to it, and then that American twist with that new old kick. It's well worth checking out. If you can find a bottle of Brukellen, uh, they are available through, through some independent bottlers. They are also available, I believe, on their website. Um, and Sealbox also does sell some of their stuff. So if you Get a chance to try a Brew Kellen out, definitely give it a shot. It's well worth it. All right, so we're going out of the city a little bit, and we're going to hit the Hudson Valley, where we're going to find Hill Rock Estate Distillery. Now, I'm not sure that there is a more traditional American single malt producer in this country. Uh, the barley that they use is grown right there at the estate. They're floor malting in the old style. They're slightly peating. It is just a very traditional style single malt whiskey, except it's made right here in the States. Uh, they're one of the few field to glass distilleries in the country. Their hard way, I'm going to air quote here because it's the right way, but it's the hard way, pays off. Uh, very earthy, robust, wonderful malty uh, single malt whiskey. So being slightly peated is pretty reminiscent of some some Highland, old familiar Highland style Scotch whiskeys that you've enjoyed. Their mouthfeel second to none. I, I'm just going to go out all in here on a limb here. And in my opinion, this will rival just about any single malt whiskey on either side of that Atlantic Ocean. It's an absolutely fantastic whiskey. Don't be afraid of the price point on this one. I can assure you it is well worth it. Oh, just to add a little name drop to this, Dave Pickroll was involved in getting these guys going from 2011 uh, as the master distiller. Moving on to number seven, we're going to travel south a little bit into Virginia, and we're going to look at Copper Fox Distillery. Rick Wasman, since 2005, has been crafting some seriously unique American single malts. He's got a couple of firsts to boast about. He is the first to Applewood Age single malt in the States. He is also the first malting floor and kiln in the United States since Prohibition. He's using local fruit woods to smoke his barley. He's using a single farm, single farmer to grow his barley, which the barley was designed specifically for him at Virginia Tech. Rick was in an internship program over at Bamore on Isla in Scotland. 
where he learned uh, probably a good amount about making single malt whiskey. And he got some words of encouragement to go make his own. And those words were one phrase of just go and do it, lad. In my opinion, it's going to be one of those ASMs that's just hard to beat. And if you find one, pick it up. I doubt you're going to go wrong with it. All right, so I know we've kind of traveled that outer ring of America here. Can American single malt, great American single malt, only be made in that outer ring? Not even close. We're going to travel into Kentucky, right down in smack dab in the middle of the United States. Town branch from Lexington. Now, I'm going to admit this. Uh, I did try this several years ago and was definitely not thrilled with what they were putting out at that time. But since then, they have grown tremendously. This is the Town Branch American Single Malt. It is seven years old, and it is aged in one of their own um, bourbon barrel ale barrels. So the seven years in the used barrel gave that whiskey time to mature without over-oaking or over-tanning or any of that. And this thing is such a well-rounded, wonderful malt whiskey that they need to be talked about. A couple other things about Town Branch. They're boasting some of the oldest stocks of American single malt whiskey in the country. Uh, they're pumping out malt whiskey on two copper pot stills that came from Scotland. They have these options of beer barrels and used uh, bourbon barrels and so on and so forth to age their whiskey in. And maturation in those used barrels allows the character of the malt to shine without adding too much uh, shock value from the new barrels with subtle flavors added to it from the used barrels. And the second fill on them being uh, a beer is definitely something that is unique, uh, which is part of why this category is so awesome. So if you see the town branch, it's very, very much priced well uh, in the $45 range, and it is well worth the pickup. So check them out. All right, so moving on to number nine. And as with all spirits, independent bottling is a fantastic way to try distilleries that you A, haven't heard of or have access to, or B, trying distilleries that you have heard of, products and releases from them that are outside of their normal range. You can really get some great, great expressions out of these distilleries from independent bottlers because they're usually picking single casts and something so unique and different from their typical profile that just shows you way more of their range than what their normal expressions do. This bottler is no exception. It's Two Soul Spirits. They're a little bit newer on the scene. This is their first American single malt that they bottled, but boy, did they hit it out of the park with this one. This is out of Watershed Distilling in Columbus, Ohio. It is an absolute stunning American single malt. Watershed aged this thing in a number five char new oak. And then Two Soul Spirits took that five plus year old whiskey and finished it for a little while in an apple brandy barrel and made it just over six years old. Uh, this particular release or this whiskey totally embraced the lack of barrel requirements for American single malts as a category and definitely shows this unique availability of making products that are coloring outside of the lines, so to speak. Uh, Two Soul Spirits is independent bottler to talk about and I hope, I hope I can see more American single malts from both Two Soul Spirits and Watershed Distilling. So as independent bottlers go, give these guys a look. They're showcasing smaller distilleries and making them shine. They're doing fantastic stuff. Give them a shot, guys. They're pretty great. All right, and number 10, coming in at the end, this spot's not going to have a specific brand or distillery that I wanna talk about. However, I'm encouraging you with this spot to get out to your local places and try their American single malts. Most of these guys that are making these whiskeys at these small local little craft distilleries have a serious passion for the craft 
and it shows in their bottles. Um, not to mention you get to support and, and help a local business grow and thrive. And that's very important, especially in the whiskey world. I have two personally in my state that I really, really enjoy. Um, one coming out of Door County, Wisconsin as Hatch Distilling and their Dock Wall Single Malt. And the other is a little bit newer, but Tattersall, the Interstate American Single Malt. Both absolutely fantastic single malts and showcasing what American single malt is all about and these smaller craft distilleries really, really putting the effort in to make quality products and showcase their creativity and the available lack of rules to this category. Any of these whiskeys, also fantastic starting points and even not starting points, these are fantastic whiskeys, even if you're well into it. Um, so a note to those big guys that are making all the whiskey in America right now. If you're thinking about getting into the American single malt game, this is your competition right here. And it's a high bar and you better be prepared to take second place. Thank you guys, and I hope this was kind of a fun video, and I hope you kind of learned uh, a few distilleries that you may not have known about, and give some of these guys a shot. But until the next time, cheers to this American spirit.